What if your skin could see? What if your teeth were harder than steel? And what if your body was covered in medieval armor that had been evolving for 400 million years? Well, meet the chitin, a bizarre creature that you've probably never noticed before that lives in tidal zones all around the world. Don't let its humble appearance fool you. This is one of the most bizarre and underrated animals in the ocean, and today you're gonna learn exactly why. All right, let's dive into the insane biology of the chitin. Let's start with the basics. At first glance, the chitin doesn't look like much, just a brownish oval stuck to a rock. But if you get close, really close, you'll see its body is covered in eight overlapping plates that shimmer ever so slightly. These are called valves, and they form a tough, segmented shell that can flex and curve with the rock's contours. It's not just protection, it's armor with mobility. A medieval knight crossed with a limpet. Underneath is a muscular foot that grips the rock with intense suction. No glue, no barbs, just pure vacuum sealing pressure, molded to the surface like a living, breathing suction cup. This makes chitons nearly impossible to pry off without a sharp edge and gives them unmatched resilience in the wave-battered world of the intertidal zone. Now here's where it gets weird. Look closely at the chitin's armor and you'll see dozens, hundreds, even thousands of tiny black dots. These are called esthates, and they're not just holes or spots. They're part of a complex, integrated sensory network. Most act like basic light detectors, helping the chitin sense changes in illumination, like shadows from predators above. But in some species, like Acanthoplura granulata, some asthetes have evolved into true image-forming eyes. And these eyes have lenses made of argonite, a mineral version of calcium carbonate. In other words, this animal builds functional eyeballs out of rock. These lenses actually bend and focus light onto light-sensitive cells below the surface. The resolution is crude, something like a grainy pixelated grayscale, but it's enough for the chitin to detect motion, direction, and danger. It's the only known creature that can see through its armor. Imagine having a suit of plate mail that lets you spot a bird flying overhead. It's biology bordering on science fiction. But why does a slow-moving grazer need vision at all? Because in the world of tide pools, survival is about awareness. A crab's claw, a diving bird, a predatory fish, any shadow from above could be a threat. So chitons don't run, they don't hide. Instead, they use their eyes to detect the threat before it's close and then clamp down hard. The muscular foot flattens them against the rock, valve sealed, edges tucked tight. Their body becomes indistinguishable from stone literally merging into their environment. To a predator, they just disappear. It's not just passive defense, it's armor with surveillance. A 360 degree biological alarm system that's been quietly watching for hundreds of millions of years. Now, when they're not locked down in self-defense mode, chitons spend their time eating, but not in the way you might expect. They're grazers, scraping algae and microorganisms off rocks with a structure called the radula, a tongue-like conveyor belt lined with rows of tiny teeth. But here's the twist. These teeth aren't just sharp. They're reinforced with magnetite, a natural iron oxide that's both magnetic and incredibly hard. In fact, chitin teeth are the hardest biological material known to science. Harder than bone, harder than enamel, even harder than spider silk. Each tooth wears down as it scrapes the rock but the chitin supply grows more in an endless conveyor belt of biological nanomachinery. It's the kind of design material scientists dream of, self-renewing, ultra-hard, perfectly adapted for abrasion. The chitin's design is no accident. The body plan has been refined over 400 million years, dating back to the Paleozoic era. Chitons have survived all five major extinction events, watched continents shift, Oceans rise and fall, and entire animal lineages come and go. They haven't needed to change much, because what they do works. They don't chase prey, they don't migrate, they find a good patch of algae, graze by night, and return to the exact same spot to rest each day. Some even wear visible resting scars into the rock, like an animal-shaped key in a geological lock. And incredibly, many chitons can live for 20 years or more, despite the constant pounding of waves, heat, cold, and predators. 
They don't just endure the elements. Chitons become part of the landscape. Now when it comes to reproduction, chitons keep things simple, but strangely elegant. They have separate sexes, and most release sperm and eggs directly into the water column, a biological gamble known as broadcast spawning, similar to what hard corals do. With no parental care, the fertilized eggs hatch into trochophore larvae, tiny planktonic swimmers that drift for days before settling onto rocks. There, they undergo metamorphosis, growing their first plates and beginning life as slow, armored algae farmers. They'll never leave their tide pool. They'll never hunt. But in that stillness is a kind of quiet sophistication, an ancient pact between form and function. We tend to celebrate the fast and flashy and the intelligent. But nature doesn't play favorites, it plays long games. And the chitin is a master of the long game. It's not cute, it doesn't perform, but it builds armor that sees, teeth that never dull, and a life that lasts through extinction and upheaval. It teaches us that success in evolution doesn't always look like dominance. Sometimes it looks like sticking around, silently, patiently, for half a billion years. So the next time you crouch down near a tide pool, look closely. That little armored bump on the rock? It might just be one of the most extraordinary animals you've never heard of, watching the world through eyes made of stone. What if I told you that there is a snail living at the bottom of the Indian Ocean that is made out of iron? Well, that is exactly the story of the scaly foot snail, and today we're going to be diving into this insane creature, the environment it calls home, and some of the mystery that still surrounds its biology. I'm Ned, a science storyteller. Thanks for tuning in to The Curious Current, and consider subscribing if you're interested in learning more about the ocean and all the mysteries beneath the waves. The scaly foot snail, or Chrysomalin squamiferum, is one of the weirdest, toughest animals on the planet. It lives on hydrothermal vent fields over 2,000 meters deep in the Indian Ocean, where scalding hot fluids pour out of cracks in the seafloor, rich with metals and sulfides. Instead of saying no thanks to that extreme environment, the scaly foot snail said yes please and turned it into a home and a fashion statement. Its foot is covered in hard, overlapping scales made of pyrite, aka fool's gold, and gregite, a magnetic iron sulfide also found in compass needles. This snail isn't just surviving, it's cosplaying a medieval knight. But that's not all. This snail shell is a biological marvel. It's made of three layers. A top layer of iron sulfide plates, think armor plating, a middle layer of organic cushion, basically a shock absorber, and a bottom layer of argonite, which is a calcium-based mineral also found in pearls. Together, this tri-layer design makes the shell incredibly resistant to crushing forces, temperature swings, and even predatory attacks. Engineers have studied this structure for developing better armor and flexible ceramics. This is called biomimicry. If you're interested in learning more about biomimicry, I've already put out a video on the subject. You can see it in the video here. Uh, go ahead and follow that if you're interested in learning more. So yeah, this tiny snail is basically influencing military grade tech while we're still trying to remember where we left our keys. To understand how the scaly foot snail became so <laughs> extra, you've got to understand its world. Hydrothermal vents are like underwater volcano chimneys and hotter than your shower on its angriest setting. But somehow it's teeming with life. No sunlight means no photosynthesis. So everything here runs on chemosynthesis, a process where bacteria use chemicals like hydrogen sulfide to make energy. The scaly foot snail takes this a step further. Its esophagus houses special bacteria that live inside its own body turning those chemicals into nutrients. It's like carrying a private power plant in your gut or in your throat. Move over probiotics. This is symbiosis turned up to 11. Let's dive into the science of extremophiles. This snail isn't just a curiosity. It's a biological blueprint for surviving extreme conditions. Studying creatures like this helps us understand how life might exist on other planets like the icy moons Europa, which may have deep ocean vents of their own. They also teach us about biomineralization, how organisms build hard structures, and how symbiosis can drive evolution in wild directions. It's the kind of discovery that makes you realize 
the more we explore, the weirder and more wonderful life becomes. These deep sea vent fields are now being targeted for deep sea mining, a growing industry that wants to extract rare metals from the seafloor. And guess what sits right on top of these precious minerals? Yep, creatures like the scaly foot snail. Entire ecosystems that have existed for millions of years could be wiped out before we even finish cataloging them. In fact, the scaly foot snail was the first deep sea species to be listed as endangered, not because it's being hunted, but because its home might be destroyed. What if I told you that there is an animal living at the bottom of the ocean made entirely of glass? Not a shell, not armor, not a piece of its body. No, the entire animal is made out of silica. This animal lives in near total darkness. It never moves, yet it builds towering structures that can last for thousands of years. This is the story of the glass sponge, one of the most ancient and beautiful life forms on the planet. My name is Ned, I'm a science storyteller, and this is The Curious Current, where we dive into all the mysteries of the ocean. Let's dive in. The glass sponge belongs to a group called Hexactinolita, a rare and ancient class of sponges. Unlike most sponges made of soft tissue or calcium carbonate, glass sponges are built from silicon dioxide. Yes, actual glass. The glass that you see in windows, if you're looking out one right now, is also made of silicon dioxide. These spicules, tiny interlocking glass needles, form an intricate lattice, creating beautiful, delicate structures that look like crystal snowflakes under a microscope. But don't let their fragility fool you. Some glass sponges, like the Venus flower basket, can survive for thousands of years on the seafloor, enduring pressure, cold, and darkness at depths below 3,000 meters. So let's explore the deep sea habitat where the glass sponge lives, at crushing depths in almost total darkness. Glass sponges are mostly found in the abyssal and hadal zones, where light never reaches and the temperature hovers just above freezing. These creatures anchor themselves to the seafloor. Glass sponges are known to create what are known as sponge reefs. And yes, you're hearing that correctly. Essentially, entire reefs made of living glass. In places like British Columbia's coast, these sponge reefs stretch for kilometers and may be over 9,000 years old. They feed not by hunting, but through filter feeding, essentially sucking in water through their porous bodies and straining out tiny particles like bacteria and plankton. And they do it in slow motion. Everything about them operates at a different tempo, the pace of deep time. Here's where it gets weirder. The Venus flower basket, one of the most famous glass sponges, forms a lattice so perfectly designed that it's been studied by engineers. Its structure combines strength, flexibility, and beauty, all while being grown, not built. They do say that evolution is the greatest architect. Scientists are studying its architecture for new biomimetic materials, stronger buildings, better bridges, even next-gen fiber optics. And inside that sponge, often you'll find a pair of tiny shrimp, a male and a female, that enter when young, grow too large to leave, and live out their lives inside cleaning the sponge, and feeding on scraps. It's a biological love story sealed in crystal, and one of my very favorite examples of symbiotic relationships. Some individual glass sponges may live for over 10,000 years, making them among the oldest organisms on Earth. Let that sink in, 10,000 years. That means that some of these creatures were alive before human civilization began farming. And unlike coral reefs, which grow relatively fast, Sponge reefs are geological in pace. They rise millimeter by millimeter across millennia, shaping deep sea ecosystems that shelter fish, crustaceans, and microscopic life. Destroying one with a trawl net is like toppling a cathedral. It can take thousands of years to rebuild. Sadly, these ancient glass cathedrals of the deep are incredibly fragile. Trawling, mining, and deep sea development can shatter them in an instant. Scientists are racing to map, protect, and understand them before they're lost to history. We know that they're, um, that they're still doing some trawling and um, some prawn trapping. 
there must be kind of a way to get these reefs protected right away because if we, if we wouldn't do that, the reefs would be gone within a few years. So these sponges are the only glass sponges that are reef forming. So, and the only place that they are forming reefs are on the, the Canadian coast. So next time you look through a window, remember, somewhere at the bottom of the sea, there is a creature made out of glass that has been quietly watching the world pass by for the last 10,000 years. Thanks so much for coming here to learn about the glass sponge. I do deep dives into all sorts of different sea creatures and concepts of biological evolution, as well as ecology. I'm Ned, reminding you to stay curious and stay current. Thanks again for watching. If you're interested in learning more about the ocean, consider subscribing, throwing a like, and leaving a comment below. I'd love to hear what you'd like to learn about next.